Hi, Dan here from BeatMatchGuru.com. Today we're going to be talking about how to record a DJ mix using Ableton. So, there's five steps to this and we'll quickly run through them for you so you can get recording your DJ mixes. So, step one is to connect a Y cable, so a phono to jack. So you want to connect the phono part of this cable to the back of the mixer. And you can do that by connecting to the tape or DJ booth, it says booth on the back next to the, the audio phonos. The reason why I've used a booth in the past on this particular mixer is because on the actual mixer itself you can use a volume control that allows you to uh, well manage the, the signal going to Ableton itself. So once you've got that done, you want to connect the, the other side of the, the, the phono to jack to a sound card. So this part is actually really important because a sound card can provide a lot of uh, clarity uh, and audio quality. So you can connect the jack to the sound card itself. And I use a sound card by Apogee and it's called One. So there's One by Apogee. It's a really good sound card. It's served me well in the past. And what you need to do is connect that sound card to the laptop and then the hardware is done. So then onto, onto step three, you need to set up Ableton. So Ableton is an awesome software. It's, it's technically a door, so a digital audio workstation. And all you need to do is open up a audio track and select line in. And once you've done that, we're on to the next step and you can test and do a sound check. So from the, the turntable and the mixer, you can start playing a track or a digital vinyl or whatever, and see if the line, uh, the, the volume going to the, the actual audio track on Ableton is picking up a signal, and you want to make sure that it's not going into the red. But what you can do is also do a, a sound check by recording the, a, a test test mix or maybe just one track and, and just review the audio audio signal itself to see if it's not distorting or it's not too low. So that, that's a really essential part of that. And then the next step is to actually go ahead and record your mix and my advice here is really key and I've done another video on this and that's to stay out of the red when you're recording your, your mix for like an hour for example and staying out of the red will improve the the audio quality of the mix altogether and no distortions and no lacking of of the audio quality so once you've recorded your mix then fantastic then the final step is to do a post edit um, of the audio file itself so once you've recorded the mix you click stop and then you can edit out the, the front and the end, well the start and the end, if there's any like blank, blank spaces to tidy up the, the audio file itself. So once that's done, you can edit, export the, the audio file itself. So I, I recommend uh, either a WAV file or an MP3. And I think a lot of people tend to say go with 24 bit, but that's entirely up to you in terms of the, the the file format and the audio quality that you want to output. So that's it guys, that's a very simple way to get recording your DJ mixes and if you want to find out any more information about recording a DJ mix, so like using USB from a USB mixer or, or using a, a separate device for recording audio or or even using uh, Serato DJ software. I've got a really good article on my uh, website, beatmatchguru.com forward slash recording, and I'll put the link below, and there's heaps of information on there, and there's lots of other great blogs that you can read on there. So until next time, guys, this has been beatmatchguru.com. Cheers.